Welcome back. Today is a maintenance video. Does your vehicle have difficulty controlling on the road? Does the handling seem difficult? Does it feel like it is going somewhere other than in the direction you intended? Does it feel difficult to turn and lean when cornering? Do you feel like you will slip when you see the sand? Does the bike jerk as if someone is pushing or pulling it from the side when it's on the lines along the road or the edge of a patchwork in the tarring? We will think it's a problem with the rear wheel, swing arm or wheel bearing. But in 99% of the cases, this happens because of the problem of this one item, steering cone bearing. If this thing is perfect, the bike will float on the road. This is not an expensive item, but replacing it is difficult. But it is easy if you understand how to do it. How to do this on a scooter is explained step by step and in detail in this video. This corn bearing is damaged by running on very bad roads in my place for about a couple of years. The handlebar and the front wheel are fixed to the chassis of the vehicle on two bearings. This is one of the most vulnerable parts of a two-wheeler. Steering corn bearing is also known as a corn set. Any shock from the road that doesn't end in suspension will damage it at least to a small extent. It won't be any big damage. A very small dent is enough from the hit of the ball on the bearing body on which it rests. These small dents can be amplified in the handle and we can feel that on a large scale. So even a very small dent in it can make the bike's handling worse. The handlebar should move smoothly in both directions. There should be no blocking in between. Because according to lean of the bike on the road and according to our control, this steering should be turned by itself very minutely. It should be precise and should turn just enough, not too much or too little. If not, we will feel what I asked at the beginning of the video. As you can see, the front wheel is raised off the ground. When it comes to the middle, it is like landing on a pit. You can clearly feel that it is very difficult to get over that pit and turn to both sides. So this is the easiest way to identify if it is damaged. It can be understood immediately if the cone is tight. If you pull the front fork together and shake it, you will know if the cone is loose. If so, it should be tightened first. Then see if you feel this. If you understand the symptoms, you can now understand how to change them. Explained in Entorque, but apart from how the body panels are removed, everything related to cone bearing is basically the same in all the small bikes and scooters. There are only very minor differences. So if you watch this video, you can do it on other bikes too. This is what a corn set is. We'll explain all these when we see them in the chassis. The front wheel, suspension and handle are all attached to the chassis with this bearing. So all this must be removed. Only then can it be changed. It is accessible on scooters only after removing the front panels. Now remove the panel that includes the headlight. There are two hidden screws underneath this. You can open it by pushing your finger from the bottom. The top and right should be pushed. There is a catch on the bottom left side corner to keep it from going down. Now these two screws. Now there are some snap clips with the back and bottom panels. You can pull it slowly on the upper side and free it. The bottom part will be free with it. The connection of the headlight should be removed. By loosening this one bolt, the whole handlebar part can be removed from the T-stem. None of the washers and spacers on it should fall into the body panels. Then it will be difficult to take. These cables do not allow the handlebar to lift up. So let's open this front part and make it free. The accelerator cable has enough free play, but the disc brake fluid line and rear brake cable should be free. The disc brake can be released from the wheel. And the clamps of the hose. The rear brake cable can be freed from the brake lever. For that, the rear brake nut should be loosened. 
only then can the cable be pulled now the handle is easily removed this is the t stem its upper side is left free now the lower side that means the tire mudguard and shocks have to be removed the spaces on both sides of the wheel hub should be kept safe on older vehicles there will be speedo cable and crown pinion gears now since the speedo is from the engine you won't see those things here do something to prevent the bike from coming to the front but the vehicle will sit back on the center stand as soon as the front weight is reduced though i have put a weight there just to double sure this is where i put all the removed screws but you can store it in a tray or something so there won't be any need to fear that the screws will be missed plastic mudguard has washes like this don't miss it it is there to reduce the load on the plastic when the bolt is tightened otherwise the plastic will crack there this upper bolt also holds the shock pipe in the correct position that's what this groove is for now the problem can be clearly noticed when all the weight is removed there is difficulty with going from the middle to either side there is something like a spring action centering it when you get to the middle the balls should be landing in the dents made by the balls itself here starts the real concept replacing work this nut is what holds everything in place this is a setup to prevent the self rotation of the bearing play adjuster in vibration we'll explain when fitting it back this washer is also a part of it this nut is the play adjuster of the cone bearing as well as the initial holder of it so when you loosen it this t stem will go down so it should be done by giving a support to it at the bottom now let's remove it better to count the balls to know how many there are some vehicles balls come in a carrier so there is no need of counting just put it like that but this must be counted to put the correct number of balls back there are 19 here similar at the bottom this type of cone bearing is mainly of five parts four rings and some balls these rings are cups and cones This type is commonly known as cup and cone bearing. The balls are held under load inside the cup by the cone. Both cups sit on the chassis. One cone comes free without being fixed anywhere like it at the top, while the other is fixed in the T stem. Balls will be in between. It is in this cup and cone that the ball makes dents. All this should be replaced with a new one. The cone in the T stem can be removed by heating it with something like this. This should be done by placing it on top of something thick like this so it doesn't get scratched. What is needed is a small multi-part balanced tapping, not a large hammering. Make sure that the cone is level. There should be no damage to the T stem also. The cone is on top of a washer. You need some kind of long metal thing to remove the cups in the chassis. A large screwdriver is enough. As before, it should be slowly beaten in multiple places. Do the same at the bottom too. Before that, you should check or take a photo to know how deep it sits. It will be useful when installing the new one. Now let's clean these seats and put in new cups. Can be greased for a little lubrication or spray WD-40. There are two cups. So to know which one is below and which one is above, you just need to put it in the stem like this. The one that goes all the way down should be placed below and that doesn't go so far should be placed at the top. Although the outer size of both is the same, the size of the inner hole is different. You can tap it down slowly with a hammer. All sides should go down the same. For that, it has to be hammered alternately. But the bead must not fall into the polished seating part of the ball. Look where it sits higher and tap there more. Tap it until it sits flush with the seat top. 
After that, clean an old cup and place it on top of the new cup in reverse form and tap on it. We can feel it when the cup is fully seated. The sound will change a bit. Then you can check if there is any gap in its seating with your fingernail. The bottom cup placement is a bit tricky due to its position. Do the same as above. But the cup here should sit more inside than above. So the old cup that is on top will go inside a lot. Make sure it is fully seated. To get the cup back, just pull it with a big spanner from underneath. I later only realized that it was not recorded. At last, the nail test should also be done. Also make a visual check on the seat to see if it's level. Now let's go to T-stem. Cleaning and lubing should be done as mentioned earlier. Put the new washer and cone and put an old one on top in reverse and tap it down the stem. To know whether the cone has reached the bottom of the seating, just try to rotate the washer at the bottom. Now let's put the balls. Grease is applied and the balls are stuck to it. The number is 19. Spread some more grease on top. So the lower one is finished. Now the top should be done like this. Now let's set everything. Before that, the bottom cup should be greased. Then apply grease on the upper cone. The cone, the top weather seal and the nut should be placed very close to the top cup. Because if we take the T stem and insert it from the bottom, we can only remove the arm after tightening all these things with the nut. If you are alone like me, there is no problem if there is someone else to help. So let's insert the T stem. Keep those balls from falling. Once it touches the lower cup, it should be strongly pushed up and held there. You can release the other hand only after putting the cone, dust seal and nut and tightening it. A hand tightening is sufficient for this nut. Now all that blocking is gone and it becomes very smooth. Now place these two things and the top nut. Tight it. Now let's put the handlebar back. Everything can be fitted back in the reverse order of removal. Put back the brake cable. The rear nut should also be put back. Only when that groove is aligned will the top bolt go in. This is how it locks. Already is locked to the bottom nut on one side of the washer. Another one is now bent to the top lock. As the lock rests in a groove in the stem, it will not rotate. So the nut will never rotate on its own in vibration and become tight or loose. Now let's fit the body panels back. Don't forget the connection of the lights. Now the handle is very smooth. When took a test ride, the handling was like new. Hope this video will be useful for many of you. Then like and subscribe for more good videos. See you next week in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.